Due process, honored for three consecutive years with the Mid-Atlantic Emmy for Outstanding Talk Program Series. How does that feel? Oh, great. You need no license to do a tattoo and no minimum age to get one. In fact, there are no state rules that govern tattooing or body piercing. Is there something wrong with this picture? Up next on this edition of Due Process. Major funding for Due Process is made possible by the New Jersey State Bar Foundation, committed to educating the public about the law. Additional funding is provided by Lawyer's Diary and Manual. To get your hair cut, better find a licensed barber. Want to get your nails done? You'll need someone licensed to do manicures. But if your kid just has to get her ankle tattooed or his tongue pierced, watch out. I'm Raymond Brown, and on this edition of Due Process, the entirely unregulated business of piercing and tattoos. We'll talk to a doctor about health risks involved and to a piercer and tattooer who warns that licensing could bring some problems of its own. But first, here's Sandy King to take us inside the world of piercing and tattoos. Raymond, in preparing for this program, we surveyed most of the tattoo and piercing parlors in New Jersey, scores of them. And what we learned is that nearly all of them at least claim to self-regulate. Most say, for instance, that while the state sets no minimum age for getting tattooed or pierced, they set age limits of their own, usually 18 for tattoos and 16 to get pierced. That's what they say. And for most, it may be true, but there is no one to enforce the rules on age or hygiene, experience or skill. Once you've got one, it is yours for life. Like it. I'm thinking long and hard when I got this one too. <laughs> too late now. Too late now. <laughs> or not. So grateful that bear. I don't. I regret the two of them. So who's allowed to get a tattoo? By New Jersey state law, it can be anyone who wants one. How old were you when you got your first one? I was 15 and I was stupid and I went to the first person that would tattoo me without asking for an ID. And who's allowed to make these permanent marks? Virtually anyone who has a mind to. The problem is you can just buy a tattoo kit and a piercing kit. You can buy it from the tattoo magazine, send for it, and then you can set up a business. So that's dangerous. Very, very dangerous. So this assemblywoman wants to put some laws in place that would limit the tattoo machine to licensed operators only? We license hairdressers, yet we don't license tattoo people and piercers? No, not at this time. And would make it illegal to tattoo a minor, someone under 18, without parental permission. And that's kind of stupid. I think people should be able to do whatever they want to their bodies. It's not... I don't think it's right for people to say you can't do something to yourself. It's a jasmine flower. And there are lots of kids who are increasingly seeing tattoos as that must-have fashion accessory. Every day we always have kids coming in here with fake IDs. Every day? Every day. Whether it's for a piercing or a tattoo, they're in here every day trying to scam us. It's a scam you'd need if you're under 18 and hope to get a tattoo at this Montclair shop where even parental consent won't cut it. Personally, I don't feel that each child under 18 years old has the uh, ability to really think about and add up the consequences of what they're doing. Even though the law says you can. Even though the law says you can. So there is some voluntary self-regulation. For some shops, it's a matter of principle. For others, it's a case of practicality. Our tattoo studio um, is 18 or over. 
we knew there was going to be some regulations coming down the pike, so we wanted to really be ahead of the curve. But that curve has yet to be rounded. The assembly bills that would set the new regs were stalled for months in committee. Now they're out and a vote could come soon. But for now, tattooing still remains entirely unregulated, as does its sister business, body piercing. All right, deep breath in, fall out. That's it. One, two, three. Good job. How you doing? And piercings these days don't stop even at the navel. Your tongue's going to swell. You're going to be uncomfortable from anywhere from two to ten days. The tongue is an increasingly popular sight and one that presents its own set of risks. Stick your tongue out. Just relax. You have an infection on your tongue and you hit the wrong spot. I mean, you could lose your tongue and your life. So it is serious. We pierce 15 and up. Um, if you're under 18, you have to show ID. Your parent has to show ID. Your parent also has to come in, sign a parental consent form. This 15-year-old had this piercing done with parental permission. A few days later, he was back. Now it's infected. Yep. And so you've come to have it fixed? Yep. He did have permission. Yeah. And you think he should have permission? I think he should have permission. Matter of fact, he had gotten pierced over the summer without permission and he had to take it out. And this mother gave the go ahead, too, for her daughter, age 11, to have her upper ear pierced. And they were willing to do it for you? Mm hmm. Even though you were so young? Yeah, because my dad was with me. And so long as the parents say yes, that's okay with Assemblywoman Creco. She's concerned when parents have no say. I've had mothers coming in who were shocked when their daughters came home. How old it's were mostly they? daughters. Some were 13, some were 14, one was uh, 16, but nevertheless. And they, they were coming home pierced? Yes. Mm -hmm. Pier and tattooed also. But while infection may be the threat in piercings, in tattoos, it's also the permanence. A life altering decision my mom did not want me to make today. How old were you when you got the first one? 17. Do you think you would have made a different choice if you'd been a little older? Yeah. Yeah. On my stomach, I have a Betty Page sitting on the hood of a 50 Mercury. I don't think kids should be able to get tattooed, even with their parents' permission, um, under the age of 18. Like I said, I don't think much, many kids are um, mature enough to handle a decision like that. I don't think most parents are mature enough to let their kids make that decision. You'd make um, more money. It's not all about money. Well, money may not be everything, but with the piercing and tattoo fad still running full tilt, there is lots of money to be made with regulation or without it. And of course, there is legislation pending. But if you think that rules should simply sail through, well, there were bills passed two years ago, bills vetoed by then-Governor Christy Whitman, who said she preferred 14 is the age of consent, at least for these procedures. And Sandy, that could mean brighter prospects for that pending legislation. Do we need it? Will we get it? That's next on Due Process, so stay with us. They have license because if not, the people are at risk. Because um, I, you can see, I, I never had a tattoo, but uh, I see a lot of them. It's a serious, you know, issue. If if it's done wrong, I mean, that's a permanent scar or mark on your body. It sh there should be some type of requirement. Licenses. Um, I think that's a colossal invasion of privacy. <laughs> I don't want to go into somebody get a tattoo not knowing what their background was. Uh, needles could be dirty, whatever it could be. I think it's a good thing to have licensing where it's needed for the protection of the public. For health reasons alone, health codes you don't know in terms of uh, uh, the equipment that they're using, the sterilization of it, um, they should be licensed. In fact, virtually all the people we talked to on the street, including those who'd been tattooed or pierced, we're sure there were already licenses and laws, rules and regulations. And if the assembly has its way, there finally will be. But Chris Matisa, owner of five tattooing and piercing parlors, is here to tell us that state rules will bring problems of their own. While Dr. Ed McCampbell, with us from Newark, will tell us what we may be risking at any age if we get tattooed or pierced. Thank you for joining us here at Due Process. Chris, let me start with you and just sort of express surprise, not just my own, but I think Sandy King and almost, almost all of us here at Due Process were surprised 
surprised to find out that there really are virtually no rules or regulations covering tattooing or piercing, and that at least under the law, anybody who walks in can get tattooed. That's, and if somebody wants correct. to bring in their eight-year-old kid to get their navel pierced, there's nothing to stop it. That's correct. Although morally, most places won't do it. But in fact, there isn't any legal protection or nothing Absolutely legal. Absolutely. So it's really totally up to the person, yourself, or someone else to make that judgment. That's correct. Yeah. Dr. McCampbell, let me ask you this question. What risks, if any, are posed by having an unregulated industry involved with something that's potentially so intrusive as piercing or using needles to apply ink to the body? Well, actually, there are a number of serious risks, potentially even life threatening risks. For example, uh, Tattooing has been known to result in the development of an HIV or AIDS infection or uh, hepatitis, the various forms of hepatitis. Uh, some of the piercings, for example, the tongue piercings can cause damage to the teeth. Um, I even had a patient recently who developed HIV infection from a tongue piercing. How does that happen? I mean, how is that process of developing such an infection life threatening in that case from a tongue piercing? How does that happen? Well, in this case, uh, apparently, uh, the equipment was not properly sterilized. If you think about it, these uh, individuals are performing surgery of a sort uh, on individuals without any training in surgery, without any training in sterile technique that I'm aware of other than informal training. Now, Chris, you've been in the business for how long? Five and a half years. And obviously you have five parlors, but there are many others around the That's state. That's correct. Yeah. Have you heard about instances where people had problems with not just run-of-the-mill infections, if that is such a thing, but even more serious problems? I personally have never heard of AIDS coming from piercing or tattoos. Uh, from what I understand, and I have researched it quite a bit, I have a doctor's office right across the street from one of my shops, uh, hepatitis is definitely a very high risk because the hepatitis virus stays alive so long in the open air and sterilization has to be extreme with it. As far as AIDS was concerned, I, I am not aware of that ever happening. Dr. McCampbell, that's such a, a serious statement. Are you reasonably sure from your own medical inquiry that the AIDS, the HIV rather, was the result of a, a piercing of experience? Well, I'll put it this way. The individual, uh, this was a 15-year-old uh, boy who, uh, by the way, did not have his parents' permission. Uh, a relative took him uh, when he was away from his parents. And this 15-year-old boy said he had never had sex, he had never used drugs, and he uh, you know, had never been exposed to blood products in any way. So the only thing we can think of would be that he had the, uh, the, pierce, the, uh, that the piercing resulted in it. And as far as the, uh, the hepatitis, Hepatitis and AIDS are spread basically the same way. Uh, those two diseases tend to go together, uh, especially uh, hepatitis B and hepatitis C tends to be transmitted in exactly the same way that the HIV virus is. So it would be very surprising if you uh, could describe cases of hepatitis but no HIV infection. Now, Chris, to be fair to you, you do favor some kind of legislation. You think it's a good idea for Absolutely. there to be licenses? Absolutely. Are there any criticisms that you have of the current proposed legislation? Let's start with the age, because the state of New Jersey, the legislation currently pending, would say anybody with a parent's permission can get pierced or tattooed. That's yeah. ridiculous. You can't tell me that at 15 years old, you know what you want on your body for the rest of your life. And it definitely is for the rest of your life. It could be even younger than 15. That's with correct, yeah. Right. To, to, so you think in that respect the legislation is too soft and not stringent enough? Very soft on that. Definitely not stringent enough. And what percentage, and I know you haven't taken a formal survey, but what percentage of establishments around the state that do tattooing and piercing you think have virtually no rules and will do anybody that comes in? I think it's a small percentage, maybe 5% out of everybody who have, has a lower moral outlook on things and is ready to do anything. But I think in general, the other 95%, this is their business, this is their livelihood. All right, let me uh, get to another level. The doctor suggests to us something that seems logical, especially as to piercing, but it's almost a form of surgery. What, it would seem to me that there probably are some people who've done enough of these that they might be fairly skillful, and maybe a whole lot of people who aren't. Do you think there should be some test for how skillful a person is before they can begin to pierce by Absolutely. I, I think that there should be a test on sterilization, what their knowledge is with sterilization, their knowledge of the anatomy of where they're going to be doing the piercing, and just in general, general, you know, 
what do you know about this business? How much experience do you have in this business? And who taught you? Doc, let me come back to you. When you use the word surgery, you're talking about a surgeon in our culture is somebody who has been to college and then medical school and then an internship and a residency and then some specialized training beyond. That's an awful lot of training. Is that what you would require before anybody could be pierced cosmetically? Well, I don't know. I haven't really thought that out uh, all the way, but certainly I would think that there should definitely be specific licensing because, I mean, when you think about it, we as physicians, and especially surgeons, they do have to go through all that training, and uh, even then mistakes are made by surgeons. Clearly, if you have no training, there's, it's, there's a much greater likelihood that you could. Now, and, you know, even the sterilization process, it often is, uh, the, some of the cases of hepatitis have been reported uh, because not that the needles were not sterilized, but that the ink itself transmitted the hepatitis virus. Now, Chris, as a person who's been on the spot, you actually have some specific feelings about how sterilization should be done. Correct. Correct. Uh, I think it should be an all-disposable system. Used once. Now, that's it, not what the proposed state bill would require. Correct. You, correct. What, what they you want, would do if you were in the legislature, what you would propose is what? Correct. I would have it, uh, a system like the equipment you see here before me. It, it comes to you pre-sterilized. It's used for each tattoo or piercing. And it's, for example, hold that up. That's yeah. in a sealed envelope. And then what it would be is it would be the needle, the piercing jewelry. This comes pre-sterilized. It has a date on it when the sterilization is good for. It's used once, it's thrown away. Why would you prefer that over uh, more traditional kinds of sterilization, like, for example, we might see in a doctor's office because, or a dentist's office? Because, although not foolproof, like anything isn't foolproof, this is 99% better than taking the chance. Dr. McCampbell, does it make sense to think in terms that Chris is suggesting of something that's hermetically sealed rather than involving uh, lay folks in a sterilization process? Absolutely. I would definitely be uh, strongly for that. You know, also, one thing, the, the person administering these procedures is at some risk, I would think, because uh, just as a surgeon is at risk when he, when he uh, operates on someone with an infectious disease, so, too, if the person who's, who's doing the piercing or the tattooing has not been trained, they may, in fact, acquire an illness themselves. Now, Doc, our focus has been, not illogically, on the question of piercing, because it seems more intrusive. But with respect to tattoos, there's obviously some risk. Uh, I spoke to Chris before the show. He was talking to me about inks. I mean, do we know much about what kind of substances you can safely put in the human skin for coloration? Um, it's not something we talk about a lot in the medical journals, but uh, certainly there are articles, you know, that describe it. I would imagine that the, that the problem is not so much with the chemical composition of the inks, but more with the, uh, you know, with the sterile, ster sterility issues. But let me ask you to listen to Chris for a minute, because Chris actually does have some concerns about the qualities of the inks. So what were your concerns? Yeah, I, I think by uh, making the laws like they are, maybe we'll open up a more legitimate suppliers who start to focus on manufacturing ink that's more to a 100% a, a standard. You know, we use A, B, C, uh, it's quality controlled, you know, s something to tell us what we're purchasing that we can count on, okay. you know. All right, but now well, even... I would certainly I, all be for that because uh, if you think of the pharmaceutical industry, we, they go through stringent tests before you can put something into somebody's body. Doc, and, but, yeah. but even with uh, quality ink, I just learned in the preparation of this show that a staffer here at NJN had a tattoo uh, with apparently ink that wasn't in any way defective, but to which he had an allergic reaction. Uh, is that a possibility, and is that something we'd have to safeguard for? Absolutely, and in fact, by injecting a foreign substance into a body, you could theoretically have a, an even fatal reaction. Now, Chris, you said one of your five shops is across the street from a doctor's office. That's correct. Can I infer from that that you have at least an informal understanding that if something happens, you're across the street? Absolutely, from... yes. What happens typically in the industry, though, if something begins to happen in either a piercing or a tattooing? Uh, is it your experience that most tattooers know how to handle that? Yes, absolutely. Um, we, we have never had a problem. We've had some people who've had allergic reactions. Uh, Basically, what we tell them is to go to their doctor uh, if they have an actual infection from it. But that's very rare, the infection end. It's more of an allergic reaction. Okay. Let me ask you about the aesthetics of this. Doc, I know you just let me ask you what I want to ask one sure. question about sure. aesthetics. You have some very interesting tattoos on your arms. Correct. But let's assume you'd had those tattoos and then you didn't like them. 
Right. What happens then? Well, you can go. They have a new laser out. It's called a Q laser, from what I understand. And it's far better than they ever were. But it still isn't real nice. And the, the job it leaves afterwards. So it leaves a scar. Absolutely. And so the person sometimes at 14, 15, 16 now is making a, position, a decision that's irrevocable, essentially, without consequences. Correct. Doc, I cut you off a moment ago when you wanted to say something. No, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. But uh, the... Uh, the issue of removability of these tattoos is something. Uh, I think a lot of kids that I see who have them think, oh, well, if I don't like them, I can get rid of them. Uh, I've talked to plastic surgeons. In fact, my daughter is studying plastic surgery, and she said that the results are, are rarely satisfactory, that it, you have to really think of it as a permanent uh, as a permanent mark on your skin. Well, I know you're not a psychiatrist or a pediatrician, but you deal with people from a medical point of view regularly. Do you have a sense of what's the age at which you think people are mature enough to make a decision that, at least in tattooing, sounds irrevocable? Sounds like it can't change very easily. Well, I think 18 would probably be an age. We use a, the age of 18 for other things, and I think that would probably be a reasonable age, maybe even 21. Chris, somebody comes in maybe 19, 18, 17, uh, maybe a little uncertain, maybe with their buddies, and, and maybe you begin to sense peer pressure. Do you actually intervene in those circumstances? Absolutely. What do you do? Uh, we in intervene. Uh, an example, a uh, young lady comes in. She wants to get her boyfriend's name on her arm. Definitely no. We definitely advise against So you, against you advise that. against boyfriends' names or girlfriends' Absolutely, names? Absolutely, because we are in this business. We know that a month later they could be back in to get it covered up or, quote, removed, which we just talked about is, is hard to do. Well, how many people listen to that? People come in and they're committed to having their lover's that, name, and what you know is that at least 50% of relationships are going to dissolve. What do you do? Exactly. Then what we do is we either flat out refuse them due to age, that we think they're definitely too young to make this drastic of a decision. Or if they're, you know, if they're 19 they're or 18, 21 years old. A woman comes in and she wants and Bob or exactly. Ralph Exactly. If she says, I want it, then we do it. So you because I feel it? she's old enough that this is a commitment that she made, and I'm but sorry. But you understand this better. You, you may understand her romantic prospects better than she at the moment, and you certainly understand how irreversible. Why not say no? Well, you know, we're, we're stuck in a catch-22 situation sometimes. Even, again, with parents, we've had parents angry with us that we would not pierce or tattoo their child because it was under our guidelines. It was under that age. And, you know, we just, we felt that in this business, you can argue to a point, and then after that, you just kind of got to do what the customer wants. Dr. McCampbell, uh, you've given us some insights based on your own experience, both treating folks and because of your, doctor's, do your daughter's involvement as a plastic surgeon. Has the medical community as a whole focused very much on at least a, an issue that has medical implications, even if it's not medical in and of itself? I would say no, actually. I think they need to focus a lot more than they do. There are isolated articles in the various medical journals, but I think it's an issue of potentially major uh, public health concern, and I think the medical profession needs to do it more. Chris, uh, I, it sounds like a, a pretty ethical guy, and he sounds like he's doing things well and, you know, taking precautions. I have to tell you that not everyone does that. Well, and I would say half of the tattoos I see are of somebody's name and the, they're not with, the patient isn't with that person anymore. We've got a gubernatorial race coming up. All of a sudden you get nominated by one party or the other. <laughs> uh, what's your platform going to be? Would you actually take a position to ban tattooing and piercing or say nobody under the age of 25? Would you take a position that strong? I wouldn't take it as strong as to ban tattooing and piercing, but I would, I would tightly regulate it so that people at least, so that at least the health aspects of it could be better controlled. Okay, now, Chris, uh, when I was a kid, it wasn't that long ago, only uh, Marines and drunken sailors got tattoos. Now <laughs> it's widespread, all ages demographic groups. It's just really hip. I'm surprised that my kids' friends are in their 20s. Half of them got tattoos. Right. Do you see this continuing to expand? And if so, why? Absolutely. I, I think it's going to expand because I think way back when, when just drunken sailors were getting them, it, it was a very, like, black art. Everybody says, oh, you got a tattoo. Now it's way more accepted. So people who always wanted them are finally going to get them because now they know that they can go to their job and nobody's going to say, oh, we can't have you here with that. You know, 
So I think it's uh, most people, and, and we do it to this day. Forty-five-year-old person comes in and says, "You know, I always wanted a tattoo, but we, you know, when I was 18, it, it wasn't cool." Okay, Doc. It sounds like you say it's okay, but only with careful regulation. Yeah, I would say that. And I mean, Chris, it's certainly not something I advocate. And Chris, it sounds like you yeah. would welcome the regulation. Absolutely. Well, I want to thank you both, and maybe we'll have a chance to talk about this again if the legislature acts in the near future as it's threatening to do. Thank you both for dealing with us today. That's it for this edition of Due Process, but we'll be back here next week with yet another new and incisive look at law and social justice. Till then, for Sandy King and all of us here, I'm Raymond Brown. Thanks for watching. Kids coming in here looking for tattoos? All the time. How often? Just about every day. Every day? Just about. What ages? We have kids as young as 14, 15 coming in here trying to pass themselves off as 18 or so to try to get a tattoo, yeah. And why don't you do them? Um, because basically they're not 18. Um, they don't know what they want, whether they believe that or not. Um, they just don't know what they want yet. They're not mature enough to make a life-altering decision like that. Granted, it's just the tattoo, just the tattoo. That's all I think it is. But still, for most people that don't have my sensibility about it, you know, it's a major, major decision in their life. Major funding for due process was made possible by the New Jersey State Bar Foundation, committed to educating the public about the law. Additional funding was provided by Lawyer's Diary and Manual.